I think I can capture the reason why I moved out to Colorado in one word, whimsy. <laughs> it's worked out well for me. And I started making homebrew while I was a student. It was still illegal, but the feds had better things to do than bust people for home making homemade beer. <laughs> well, at least I'd like to think so. You know, by my standards today, I, it was probably drinkable, like pro still drinkable beer, but it's, I've learned so much in the years here in Boulder when I, I was teaching beer making classes from 1973 to 1981 uh, out of my home. And I taught over a thousand people how to make beer in the Denver Boulder metropolitan area. And that was the foundation for what I would consider the, the beer culture that has evolved here in Colorado. What really important was that we, the network of people in the community of home brewers, we, we talked to each other, we shared our experiences. What we developed was diversity and choice. My, one of my former students and myself, Charlie Matson, and, my, and I decided to uh, let's start a newsletter and we drank more homebrew and our ideas got crazier and crazier and we started a magazine, we said let's start a magazine, well we could have an association. So in 1978 we've, we established uh, the American Home Brewers Association and published our first issue of our magazine which is called Zymergy Magazine. The first Great American Beer Festival was in 1982 and I, got, I was inspired to start that after a visit to England. I went to the Great British Beer Festival in 1981 in Leeds. I was invited to judge the best to show and I walked in there and there were thousands of people and, and hundreds of beers and they were celebrating their national heritage of, of real ale and, and brewing and I, I got to thinking wow, maybe we could do something like this in the United States, the Great American Beer Festival. In 1982, there were only 40 breweries in the country, and they were all making light lager, pretty much. We didn't want to have a Great American Beer Festival and just celebrate light lager. We wanted some interesting beer, so we had a connection to the beer, the small brewers. They were making some interesting beers, some German-style beers, some porters, some stouts, and. We had never heard of them here out here in Colorado, and we asked them whether they would send their beer to the Great Ameri our first Great American Beer Festival. And to this day, I am still blown away that they said yes. The first Great American Beer Festival had 22 breweries and 40 beers and 750 people. There are more beers, more brewers. At, at the 2019 Great American Beer Festival than there were people at the first Great American Beer Festival. So that that kind of kind of encapsulates the, the tremendous growth. Every time I go into the beer festival, it's like it's it's still overwhelming. My emotions are overwhelmed. I get asked, "How does it feel?" It just blows me away because it's such a celebration, and all the people there are so excited to be able to be in a space with like-minded people not only celebrate beer but to have an opportunity to taste all these different kinds of beers that people have been brewers have been creating and inventing the innovation has been fantastic we're never going to go back local and regional and craft uh, small and independent is here to stay the quality and diversity and the choice that we have is here to stay People are not to be denied choice and diversity in beer ever again. Here's to beer and what's going to be brewed tomorrow. <laughs>